I was looking to write something that resonated with teachers, especially new teachers. And I had been writing a blog for a couple of years and I found that it was really, I don't want to use the word resonating again, but resonating with uh, teachers sort of across North America. And I thought maybe I can turn this into a book and, and make it available to other people. But I really think that what it does is it speaks to teachers about teaching the whole child as opposed to just teaching your subject matter. It looks at not only how we can make the experience better for children, but also make the experience better for teachers. And in this day and age, we really need to establish classrooms that do have these elements of humor, compassion, and conviction, because it can be a challenging place for young people growing up today. Well, humor has always been a big part of my teaching practice. I started out teaching English as a second language to university students. That was my very first job. And I used it in, in that setting. And I taught at different grade levels. So I've taught everybody from college students to five-year-olds. And I have found that it's a way of engaging people in what you're saying. And it also breaks down that barrier between teacher and student. And it says, you know, we're in this together and we can joke together. That's always been a very important part of my practice. Awesome. In terms of compassion, as classrooms have gotten more inclusive, we really have seen the need for teachers to be more compassionate. Our classrooms are filled with students who are coming in with all kinds of issues and concerns that we may have no idea about. And it's so important, especially when you're looking at behavior that's outside of the norm that, you know, you could allow to make you get angry or upset with them. You, you have to consider that, you know, the places that they're coming from. So having compassion in your classroom is really important. And I talk about that in the book about how we need to have compassion, not only for our students, but for their families. So sometimes, you know, there's this, this response that teachers may have, you know, that, that poor kid, he doesn't get any support at home. His mom doesn't even come to parent teacher. We don't know what's going on in mom's life. We don't know what experience she might have had with school, where she, perhaps she's afraid to come into a school. So we just need to be compassionate across the board. In terms of conviction, that's something that I think that in order to help our children become strong citizens, we really need to help them develop their ability, not necessarily to be activists, but to have the strength of their own convictions, to stand up for what they believe in. So that's always been something I've tried to do, even with, with little kids. So I'll give you an example. I used to have a little girl that I taught, and she was, she was absolutely adorable. But everything, she, this was in grade four, and everything she would say, she would phrase it in the form of a question. She was absolutely terrified to state her own opinion without phrasing it in a question. So, you know, you'd, you'd ask her a question, and she would say, the answer is seven? And her voice would always go up. So I used to, I, I spent the whole year trying to say to her, I need you to be, be strong about this. You say it, you say it like you mean it. If you believe it, you say it like you mean it. And so got to the end of the year and she'd say something and everybody would look at her and she'd say, no, that's my opinion and I believe it. And she would be like really firm in her belief. So that's something that I really try to, to encourage in my students is that, you know, strength of what you believe in and, you know, don't be afraid to say what you mean and, and mean what you say. And last year I started teaching uh, at the university level, teaching new teachers. And I've been using this book as a, a classroom textbook. And I believe that it has a lot of um, good advice in there for them. So it's, I use it in my teaching language arts class, and I've also used it in my assessment class, but it's basically what it's trying to do is give them the how. How are you going to teach it? You're gonna teach it with some humor, with some compassion, and with some conviction, and, and try and help your students develop those things in themselves as well. So one of the things that, runs throughout the book is some advice for teachers themselves. So 
um, if I'm talking about compassion, there's a section in the book there about how teachers need to be compassionate towards themselves and take care of themselves and make sure that they're not getting burnt out and taking on everybody's problems as their own. So that I find is really important for new students. And also, it's almost like giving them permission to be human. It's like saying, you know, this is okay to do in your classroom. A lot of them think, you know, I have to be, I have to go in, I have to be the boss, I have to lecture, I have to, you know, make sure they learn it and this is the way they're going to do it. And I'm going to run a tight ship. And I'm trying to get them to sort of look at it from a more holistic perspective. So try and find a way that you can help your students learn how to read and write and speak and listen um, in a way that's compassionate and enjoyable and that they're going to be engaged in. So um, yeah, I've, I've found that it's worked really well and I've gotten some good feedback from my students. So uh, knock on wood, I'm gonna use it again next term and hopefully it'll go just as well. It sort of shows my style of teaching and a way that I find is engaging for students. There's, there hasn't been a lot of research on using humor in the classroom, but what research has been done has shown that it increases engagement and allows students to feel like they're part of the group. Um, and uh, I do think that, you know, I, I do put in a lot in there about how we have to be really careful about what kind of humor we use in the classroom. So we have to make sure that it's very safe, that students don't feel like they're being targeted. Um, I know when I went to school, there were teachers sometimes that would use humor in a way that was hurtful. So they would use it to, they'd go after one student to get the rest of the class to laugh. So you have to be really careful about the way you use humor. And one of the things I talk about is how I, I often turn the humor back onto myself. The compassion segment is really important. And it's one that I think we all have to work on as teachers because it's very easy to become frustrated. And I think it's really important to always think back on that compassion piece and say, where are they coming from? what might be the underlying cause of this and how can I help this child? So there are a lot of teachers who are scared right now, you know, because of what's occurring in classrooms. But I think it's, you know, if you can come in with a little bit of background understanding of, okay, this might be happening, but why is it happening and how can I work with it? I think that'll make a big difference. And so when I go back and I look at this book and I think, oh, it's very conversational in tone. It's not an example of research-based writing. But what it is, is a conversation between teachers. And it's a way of saying, I've been there and I know what it's like and I know what you're gonna be going through. And here are some of the ways that I found to cope and that, that worked for me and I'm hoping they'll work for you. So, you know, even though it may not be an academic tome, I think it's a, a really good resource for new teachers to basically say to them, it's okay. It, it, it's going to be hard, but it's going to probably be the best job you'll ever have because there are so many benefits to it and so much joy you can get out of teaching that I, I think that if you, you've got some of these, these tools and these ideas in your backpack that you're going to, you're going to be okay. You're going to be able to make it through.